Hello, this is Park Soo Young, a dental hygienist. In this lesson, we will start the lecture with oral prophylaxis, the topic. The contents of this lecture are as follows. First, oral prophylaxis definition. Second, scaling. Third, position of the clinician. Fourth, instrument grasp by four crew finger rest six policy here is an overview first of all i will explain about the oral prophylaxis here it is about the definition and method of the oral prophylaxis oral prophylaxis is a Procedure done for teeth cleaning. It removes calculus, plaque buildup from the surfaces of the teeth, as well as those hidden in between and under the gums. The dentist or dental hygienist use scalers, the type of hand instrument and ultrasonic scaler, to remove the plaque and calculus. The goal is to promote oral health through oral hygiene and to prevent further progression of periodontal disease by removing inflammation causing deposit in the early stage of the periodontal disease. In other words, it removes deposits such as dental plaque and calculus that cause gingivitis and periodontal disease and at the same time removes necrotic cementum from the tooth surface and lubricates the rough tooth surface to prevent adhesion of deposit. Let's look at classification and distribution of calculus. What is calculus? Calculus is gross deposit, primarily those on proximal surfaces may be seen in radiographs. Observing these may be helpful, but the probe and explorer are needed to define the exact location and extent, the density and contrast of the radiograph, influence whether calculus is seen because of deposit are not visible. The use of radiograph has very limited value for specific calculus detection. First, supragingival calculus. Distribution is the most frequent size. On the ringer surface of mandibular anterior teeth and the facial surfaces of maxillary first and second molar opposite the opening of the duct, the salivary glands on the crowns of teeth out of occlusion non-functioning teeth or teeth that are neglected during daily biofilm removal tooth brushing flossing or other personal care on surfaces of denture, dental prosthesis, and tongue piercing barbels. And second, we look at soft gingival calculus. Distribution is uh, generalized or localized. Maybe generalize or localize on single teeth or a group of teeth. Heaviest deposits are related to areas most typical for the patient to access during personal oral biofilm removal procedures. Second contents is scaling. Scaling is removal of calculus and dental biofilm from the supragingival and subgingival exposed to surfaces. 
How to use the manual scaler? First, secret scaler. Secret scaler's form is the face and the lateral surface on the blade meet to form two cutting edges and two sides meet to form the back. The cross section of the tool is a triangle and the angle between the inner and side surfaces of the blade is 70 to 80 degrees. Those that are straight with the connecting part are used for the anterior part. And those with a pair of connected parts with a curved shape are used for the posterior part. How to use a secret scaler? It is mainly used to remove some gingival calculus when a large amount full of supra gingival calculus. However, due to the shape of the back surface of the working group, it is not suitable for sub gingival calculus removal or root surface lubrication. Second, curate. The curate is the most suitable instrument for sub gingival calculus removal and root planing. Compared to other instruments, it has less tissue or root surface damage and is easy to apply to the two surface. There are universal curates that can be used on all teeth and great curate designed to fit specific teeth. What is a universal curate? Is a curate or Pair and usually mounted on double-ended handles. Single-ended handles may be selected for certain patients or procedures. Correct cutting edges for scaling when positioned on the two surfaces. Only the back of the blade can be seen. In correct blade adaptation, the open face of the blade will be seen. It would be impossible to angulate at 70 degrees for scaling. The open blade is in the correct position for gingival curates to remove the inner soft tissue lining of the pocket wall. And what is a grass curate? Grass curate is a um, set so that it can be used for specific part. And it is a device connected to sub gingival calculus removal and root planing. The inner side of the blade and the lower connection part are inclined at 70 to 60 to 70 degrees. And only the cutting edge of the blade can be used. The blade is inclined on two sides the tip and the side and cutting edges of the inclined side should be used. Let's, let's, next, let's watch the video how to use the manual scaler.
Next, let's take a look at the ultrasonic and sonic scaling devices. The sonic scaler uses air pressure and operates at a lower frequency than ultrasonic waves. The mechanical stimulation is weak, so it is mainly effective for removing light tools, brushes, and soft attachments. Ultrasonic scaler operates at about 24,000 to 50,000 cycles. And according to the principle of converting electrical energy into minute mechanical vibration energy, there are two types. Manerostrative type using magnetic field and piezoelectric type using piezoelectric effect. Ultrasonic scalar is also effective for Denial plug and sub gingival calculus removal and root planing. The advantage of the ultrasonic scaler is that it is commonly used in clinical practice to remove large and firmly attached calculus or exogenous stains from teeth. This has many advantages over manual instruments in terms of time and efficiency. However, it has this advantage of blunt tip, sprayed water, and erosion and noise. Let's watch the video, how to use the ultrasonic scaler. Contents 3. Position of the clinician. For better understanding, the clinician positions are related to the clock positions. Description of neutral seat posture. 1. Back. In neutral postural alignment with the natural spinal curves. 2. Head. On top of a neutral spine with a forward neck flexion between 15 to 20 degrees or less. 3i. Directed downward to prevent neck and eye strain. It is not necessary to bend the head down more than 15 to 20 degrees for prolonged periods of time. For shoulder. Relax and parallel with the hips and floor. 5. Elbows. 
close to the body. 6. Forearms, parallel with the floor. 7. Wrist, forearm and wrist are in a straight line. 8. Thigh, full body weight distribute evenly on seat. Comfortable space, about 3 inches between edge of the seat and back of knee. 9. Knee, slightly apart. 10. Feet, flat on the floor. Let's see front to side positions. The clinician sits facing the patients. Both legs are placed side by side towards the patient's head. You must be able to see directly into the patient's mouth. Among the labial and lingual surfaces of the maxillary and mandibular anterior regions. It is a suitable location for surgery on the side. Closest to the clinician, the vocal surface of the upper and lower right molars, and the lingual surface of the upper and lower left molars. Side to side positions. The clinician sits on the side by of the patients. Both legs are placed under the headrest. 9 o'clock positions, it is a suitable location for the upper and lower left posterior vocal surfaces and the upper and lower right posterior lingual surfaces. And back to side position. The clinician sits behind the patients. Sit with your legs apart on either side of the back rest. You must be able to see directly the treatment area. It is a suitable position for the treatment of the labial and lingual surfaces of the maxillary and mandibular anterior regions which are far from the clinicians. Contents for instrument grasp. By holding the instrument correctly, it is easy to control the instrument and provide stability to the patient and clinician during treatment. In addition, by controlling the intensity of holding the instrument, it is possible to increase the tactile feel in finding attachment on the two surface and reduce fatigue on the clinician hands and fingers. In this time, you are going to look at two of the methods of holding instrument, modified pen grasp and pen grasp. Modified pen grasp. One description. The modified pen grasp is a three finger grasp with specific target points of the thumb, index finger, and middle finger or in contact with the instrument. Thumb. The center of the upper aspect of the pad. Index finger. The center of the upper aspect of the pad. Middle finger, the inside upper corner of the pad, behind the upper corner of the nail. To location on handle, the instrument is held by the thumb and index finger on the handle. The upper corner of the middle finger is placed on the upper portion of the shank to hold and guide the movement. 3. Roll of middle finger. The shank of the instrument is held against the inside upper corner of the pad of the middle finger. The instrument is not held across the nail or the side of the middle finger, as in a pen grasp usually used for writing. The specific position of the middle finger is 
essential to instrument control to prevent the, the instrument from slipping during adaptation and activation and to optimize application of lateral pressure for roll of ring finger. The ring finger is used to establish a finger rest or fulcrum. 5. Additional support. The side-to-side -side contact of index, middle, and ring fingers allows for greater stability, strength, and control during instrumentation. Palm grasp type. Description. The handle of the instrument is held in the palm by cuff, index, middle, ring, and little fingers. Limitation of use. Instrument for calculus removal, root planing, and maintenance root debridement are not used with the palm grafts. The possible exception is a chisel scaler when it is used to remove gross calculus by a push stroke. Example of use for palm grafts, air syringe, rubber dam clamp holder, chisel for restorative work. Last one is a non-dominant hand stability the instrument for sharpening. Contents by Fulcrum Finger Rest. Fulcrum Finger Rest are always being used when instruments are applied to the teeth and gingiva. Definition A. Fulcrum. The support or point of rest on which a level turns in moving a body. B. Finger rest. The support or point of finger rest on the two surface on which the hand turns in moving an instrument. An effective, well established finger rest is essential to the following 1. Stability. For control action of the instrument. 2. Unicontrol. Provides a focal points from which the whole hand can move as a unit. 3. Prevention of injury. Injury to the patient's oral tissues can result from irregular pressure and uncontrolled movement. 4. Comfort for the patients. Confidence in the clinician ability which results from the feeling of securely applied instrument. 5. Control of length of stroke with instrument grasp. The finger rest limits the instrumentation to where it is needed. The intraoral finger rest is essentially a total hand coordinate effort to provide stabilization. The fingers group together with the fulcrum where the ring finger maintains its position on the tooth near the tooth being treated. Extra rest is placed on the patient's face, cheeks, chin, and lips, not inside the mouth. If the patient's skin is easily pushed or soft tissue is damaged by strong pressure, or if the hand fixation outside the oral cavity is um, in experience. The device may slip and injure the patient's face. However, if good support cannot be obtained with intraoral hand fixation, extraoral hand fixation may be used. Contents 6 Policing Policing of the two surfaces removes small defects and irregularities that occur during the cleaning process. Policing is accomplished using appropriate angle on 
a slow speed hand piece and a floor gaiety floppy paste. Smoothing the surfaces decrease plaque retention and slow the formation of calculus. Thank you for listening to the lecture on oral prophylaxis.